Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. Here's Eddie Fedrick. Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Wednesday, 7th August, 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Cartel's freedom does not justify keeping London's Privy Council. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. Attorneys in Jamaica say cartels ruling not enough to retain the Privy Council as its final court of appeal. Courtney Lewis of CVM Live reports. Legal minds have submitted that the recent ruling of an acquittal and no further retrial for international dance hall star Vibes Cartel and his co-accused is reason enough to retain the council as Jamaica's final appellate court but other attorneys claim this statement may be premature. King's counsel, Valerie Nita Robertson, asserts the ruling of the Privy Council and the Court of Appeal was sound, but should not be considered as one of the major reasons to retain the UK-based court. I really wouldn't base the keeping of the Privy Council on one case. What I would be happy with is if we acknowledge that our people must have confidence in the justice system and in that regard that we ensure that the courts ensure that their judgments are sound. Her comments follow assertions by Tom Tavares Finson, who in a recent media release said the fair treatment of this kind of high profile matter by the Privy Council is another reason why many Jamaicans, including myself, support its retention as our country's final appellate court. The sentiment was supported by Counsel Tamika Harris, who believes the case is proof that Jamaica must continue to depend on the monarch for assistance. The King's Council contends focus should instead be on strengthening the local judicial system. Justice has nothing to do with politics. Our people must feel that they will get justice in our courts. That's what our courts are for. With specific regard to the cartel matter, she says the Privy Council's determination was a test of Jamaica's court's integrity. The Privy Council has a way of sending back things to our courts. Um, I believe it's the English way of saying you have to take responsibilities for certain things. You must make the appropriate findings. You know what the law is and you must maintain that and you must uphold that. So, in, to my mind, they sent it back to see if we would um, make the right decision. Courtney Lewis for CVM News. Kalisha Williams of TVJ News tells us Jamaica considers seawater to help solve ongoing water crisis. The drought in 2023 was the worst in Jamaica's history. And according to Minister with Responsibility for Water, Matthew Samuda, 2024 is on track to become the second driest on record. That means a lot for our water supply. Jamaica is a developing nation with age-old issues. So it's not that we've necessarily over the last 60 years done a good job of managing an, our distribution of potable water. And that has its own legacy issues which the government is working to correct. However, there are some issues that the government cannot tackle on its own. Chief among them, climate change, which is leading to crippling droughts. Mr. Samuda pointed to hurricane burial and the recent squall line as events which have affected the island's water sources. You'll have in an afternoon a squall line that gives you 30 days of rain in two hours. So the surface runoff also doesn't allow for the absorptive capacity of your, your systems. But then you'll have a situation where you just went through a hurricane 
and the reservoir isn't full. Because the very nature of our hurricanes and storms are changing. To bridge some of those gaps, the government is advancing plans to turn seawater into portable water. It will be done through a process called reverse osmosis desalination, which is basically removing the salt and contaminants from seawater to make it fit for domestic use. The resulting filtered water is now very, very much in demand by the Jamaican public for domestic purposes. It followed a $60 million U.S. dollar contract signing between the National Environment and Planning Agency and the U.S. Trade and Development Agency on Friday. With the technical assistance grant conferred by the United States Trade and Development Agency and by extension the government of the United States of America, NEPA will be able to undertake a study to examine the impact of reverse osmosis water treatment plants on the natural environment. As for the sectors which could benefit from desalinated water... It won't be necessary in every corner of Jamaica. But it is necessary today for corners of Jamaica that require reliable water to grow. Kelisha Williams, TVJ News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group. Underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. The hurricane season is now upon us. So we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Still from Jamaica, Beryl Grant distribution has begun. Some Jamaicans whose homes were destroyed by the recent passage of Hurricane Beryl are set to begin receiving relief grants from the government as soon as Monday, August 5. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement at the handover of units under the new social housing program in North Central Clarendon recently. The government has outlined a comprehensive recovery plan for reconstruction to assist families who have been um, verified and assessed as having suffered damage. Uh, you may recall that I had announced in Parliament uh, just over a billion dollars for this element of the reconstruction and recovery, and the Minister of Labor and Social Security would have given the details which would be 400,000 for persons who have been assessed as having totally lost their homes, um, $150,000 to persons assessed as having um, substantial damage, and 50000 for persons who would have been assessed as having uh, minor damage. I'm happy to report that come Monday, we will start the distribution of the grants for those persons who suffer total loss of their house. Uh, and uh, we will be doing, uh, on Monday morning, we will be having a uh, handing over ceremony for the grants to some of the beneficiaries. Prime Minister Holness intends to complete the handing over process within the next three to four weeks, ahead of back to school. Trinidad and Tobago's opposition is not willing to take any blame for Jindal withdrawing his bid for the refinery. In fact, the UNC says it is in Trinidad and Tobago's best interest that Jindal did not follow through. And they are advising the Prime Minister to leave the Petrotrin refinery alone. Renissa Cutting of TV6 News has more. We take no advice from Navin Jindal. We are the loyal opposition. We are committed to the rule of law. We are committed to the rule of law. And we will uphold the constitution of our republic. India has a large democracy and they have laws. That is why Jindal is facing six corruption and money laundering charges. The opposition is taking umbrage with Prime Minister Rowley's and Naveen Jindal's assertion 
that their quote-unquote attacks on the businessman's character led him to withdraw his bid for the Petrochin refinery. In fact, the opposition says it's a good thing that Jindal did not follow through, as he may have found himself facing even more charges, along with members of the government. You have to thank the opposition because you might have been facing serious criminal charges in this country had you not pulled out. The government has breached the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Property Act by favoring you, by meeting you alone and leaving out nine other bidders. That is going to lead to serious court matters. Mark says the Prime Minister is trying to make the UNC a scapegoat because the government failed to do due diligence. It is passing strange that a government with all the resources at its disposal could not have Googled Jindal, Steel and Power Limited, corruption, money laundering, and they would not have been able to discover that this man was involved since in 2004, 2006, in a, co- a coal gate scam in which he is alleged to have gotten a block to produce coal unlawfully. The opposition is accusing the Prime Minister of attempting to sell off yet another heritage asset but they're vowing to stand in the way to ensure that this does not occur. Remove your filthy hands from the people's assets. Do not touch our refinery. You are going out of office. Leave that refinery to the incoming UNC administration to address. Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind. Service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially.